All right, what's up, Legionnaires? Peter, the rhythm guitar player from Apollo's Army here, and today I have Brendan's Black Solar guitar that we are going to intonate. Now, to explain what intonation is, there's a scale length from the nut to the bridge. That is, between that and tension of the string is what sets the pitch of each string. So, when your strings vary in size, thickness, uh, the different scale lengths of the guitar, then it changes the way that the temperament of the scale works all the way up through the frets. And in order to account for that, you tune your string to the exact pitch you want it. And once it's set, then you go to the 12th fret, and it should be a perfect octave. Now as you can see on my tuning pedal, I don't know if you actually can see very well, but it's a little bit sharp. It's a little bit too high. And what that means is that I need to make the scale length longer from the 12 to the bridge by adjusting the saddles and pulling them further away. So I'm going to use my Phillips screwdriver here and just give that about a whole turn to start and see where that gets us. And you can hear it making noise because things are moving around. It's pretty normal. But you have to retune the string each time because you're actually pulling the string further away from the nut. So it changes the tension. So we get this tuned right to B. Once I get it set there to B where I like it, then I'm going to lightly touch the 12th fret. And so we're just a tiny bit sharp. So we're almost there. That's a good start. Give it about another half a turn. You know, make sure that you wiggle it around a little bit, make sure that it's done doing all the moving that it's going to. That will help with your tuning stability. If everything is just sitting as naturally and lightly as it can. So let's do that again. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I like to use the neck pickup for doing tuning anything, anything that needs like to be really accurate. I use the neck pickup and that's because in my experience it gives the tuner the best picture of what pitch your guitar is trying to share. So that's been my experience is that the neck pickup gives the most accurate reading. I do that live. So we need just a little bit more, and I think that this is going to do it. You got to remember to tune it back to the pitch that you want it after each adjustment. It's getting a little pitchy, aren't we? I know that some people might find this sort of thing like boring or and aggravating because it requires time, patience, and a little bit of knowledge. The knowledge is super accessible, honestly, and if I would have had somebody show me this like years and years ago, it would have helped me so much in my journey. The idea being that if you can manage all the basic maintenance of your own instruments, then the financial burden of being a starving musician, as the stereotype goes, is a lot smaller. So you can share that with your wife. Maybe that will help. This bugger is not not cooperating with me today. That looks pretty good, honestly. So we're gonna go B and then E because we're in standard tuning.
Would you look at that? It's right on. We want an A. Now that's a little flat, so we're going to do the opposite. We're going to close the scale length. So the idea here, to simplify what's happening with a scale length, is you understand when you fret up, you change the pitch higher. Because essentially what you're doing is shortening the scale. The tension on the string is the same. The only time that the tension has changed is when you pitch bend. And that changes the tension some, but shortening the scale brings the note up. So when we are flat, then we shorten the scale length from the bridge and that will bring our pitch up. And because we're releasing tension from the saddle, we gotta tune this back up. Pretty close, need to go a little bit more. Now, when you're releasing these saddles, sometimes it's a good idea to go a little too far and then tighten it back up because all the mechanisms need to have the chance to relax into, and, and that's the same reason why I tend to tune down and up to the pitch. Always, always tuning up to the pitch because the nature of the strings and the saddles and everything that's moving parts tend to behave more true to their pitch and tension. And that's, that's pretty good. I'm gonna give it just a little more. Go out and then back in a little bit. Okay, we're right on there. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit aggressive with it just to make sure that it's staying in tune. Sometimes they get caught up in the nut a little bit, holds them from relaxing. Yeah, I think I went just a little too far, so I'm gonna pull about a half a turn out of this. Turn it back down. And we're there, perfect. Next string, we got a D. It's a tiny bit sharp, so we are going to pull away to lengthen the scale length and drop the pitch. You want to make sure when you're doing this, when you're putting pressure on the 12th fret, that you're really close to the back side of the fret and pushing very lightly because you don't want to do anything that's going to pull the string further out of pitch than the actual position of the fret. I want to make sure that it's nice and light. And there we go. We got a perfect D. You can make all the jokes about that you want. There's a G, a little sharp, I'm gonna pull away, lengthen the scale, give it about a good turn and see where we get with that. Needs a little more.
The tricky part about working on Brennan's guitars, for me, is because he's southpaw, he plays left-handed. I never get the chance to play his guitar after I've done work to it to see if I like the way that it feels, so I just have to depend on his feedback. Which is a little tough, given that everything that I do is trial and error, like I'm not professionally trained on how to do any of this stuff. I kind of just make it up as I go. We've got a little bit to pull out of that E. So I'm quite dependent on bringing the instrument back to him and getting his feedback. So it's hard for me to make minor adjustments if, say, for instance, if I'm trying to do uh, any saddle adjustment for the string action or any of that. But I think that we are getting pretty nice here. go through and just give everything another once over and it might seem redundant at this point since we've already been through everything but when it comes to playing a guitar having it not fight you is just irreplaceable honestly having it just sound right clean true to pitch changes the experience a lot for me. When I was younger, I used to play a lot of guitars with Floyd Rose tremolos, and if anybody out there has played Floyd Rose tremolos, you know, they can be a lot to set up, a lot to tinker around with. Then if you're afraid of messing with them, well, you can you can definitely be intimidated right out of playing the guitar because they can be very frustrating. So taking the time to learn how to do some of this stuff, just it, it really gave me the opportunity to really dig in on playing the guitar because, you know, money being a factor, you can't always afford to just take it to somebody and get it fixed. But if you can take the time to fix it yourself and then be satisfied with the end result, it's just life-changing for me. So I have a little bit of a loose knob here. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. It's not something you asked me for, but I noticed it. And for this, you just use a little socket. I think it's about a 12, let's see. Oh, maybe an 11. 11 millimeter. That does not seem to fit quite right. But I mean, it's going on. It's strange. I'm just going to give this a snug. You can't go crazy on these because you'll strip them out, but you have to be just gentle. Just get it nice and snug so that it stops fighting. And there we go. I'm going to put this set screw back in. Nice and snug. Yeah, that's what's up. Oh, that one's a little bit sloppy too. I'll give that a tightening. Up we go. A little wax booger in there. And there you have it. 
nice, snug, tight, intonated beautifully. If I had a set of strings to throw on here, I would have done that first, but really the point is here is just don't be afraid to try. Yeah, you can mess stuff up, but after you mess them up, you learn a little lesson, figure out how to fix it, and then you get to play. And I can't play this guitar because it's left-handed. So. Anyway, thanks for checking this out, and uh, have a good rest of your day.